So right now we're at that point where we have insider intel, but soon it may all be confirmed or denied with reveals and official teasers, perhaps starting as early as of maybe sometime next month, though my guess is likely sometime into May, about a month and a half from now. But for now, I want to keep you guys in the loop on what's going on in relation to the buzz with Modern Warfare 2, or again, as we presume to be Modern Warfare 2, the upcoming title here for this fall. Today we're going to be taking a look at further industry insider insight into some of what we may be able to expect in regards to multiplayer gameplay mechanics, new features, and more. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Do you like these features? Think they're good, bad, whatever? And are you looking forward to learning more about what could be Modern Warfare 2 here soon in an official capacity? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, do be sure to hit the subscribe button stay with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, anything COD related. We get you covered here on the channel, and I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, today is the last day that G Fuel has code Espresso bumped up to 30% off your entire order. So if you'd like to check anything out for the very first time, grab a restock, whatever the case may be, now is as best of time as any. That said, let's jump into it. So for starters, as always, let's break down the sort of standard housekeeping rules here that we may have for those that maybe knew or didn't see our previous discussions. Number one, we're still seven to eight months away from the launch of the game, so there is so much that could be subject to change. As with all leaks and insight into development of a game, take it all with a grain of salt. Not everything will stay exactly how we mention it or is as reported. And number two, today's information comes from an industry insider with a solid reputation, but as always, sources, insight, and everything is still subject to change. So make sure that you take that into account here. What we see with the full product is still so far out that things are subject to change. But that said, today we're going to be diving into some information that the Ghost of Hope has presented from what he's heard from his sources. Now, Hope's track record has proven accurate in the past, though we haven't really heard from him in relation to Modern Warfare 2 stuff as much as recently compared to, say, Ralph or Tom Henderson, but we've seen Hope's intel in the past hold up. But what he detailed was a bit of gameplay related things, not just story intel that we've talked about here in recent videos, but actual core gameplay shakeups, curveballs, and other things for the MP experience. Some in a good way, some I'm kind of hoping don't leave the cutting room floor. But that said, let's start out with some of the more intriguing things here, the more top level and fundamental adjustments here to gameplay. Let's start out with the topic of perk selection. Now, according to Hope, he prefaced this by stating Modern Warfare 2 will change how players approach picking perks with their classes. He said he will not post exact details as he need to know further info on this, but it sounds pretty interesting and not bad at all thus far. And then he later elaborated saying not giving any specific details on perks, but the way Modern Warfare 2 is approaching perks is that you can choose four perks. This means that you get to choose two two in the first column, one in the second column, and one in the third column. From what I was told, the first column is more of choosing your playstyle, following up by saying you cannot change it to be two perks being able to be chosen in a different column, only two perks in the first column. So this right out of the gate seems interesting. The first thing that I immediately have in my mind is almost like the perks that we saw within Black Ops Cold War's campaign character creation, where after the first mission, you get to set up your character profile, and from there, you get to choose one or two, or I forget how many it actually was, of different abilities that went along with you for the rest of the campaign. Now, this, of course, seems like it would be class selection related, so it wouldn't be something that would set up for every single game, every single season for the year or two that the game would be supported, and it'd be a lot more interchangeable. But for example's sake here, in the campaign, you had Paranoid, which increased aiming speeds by 100%, Violent Tendencies, which increased bullet damage by 25%, Lone Wolf, which increased initial sprint boost duration, Fearless, which halved the explosive damage received, Reliable, ended up adding one extra mag in reserve for all your weapons. Tormented allowed you to take two additional equipment items. Aggressive behavior allowed you to decrease your reload times by 50%. Survivor allowed you to increase your max health by 25%. Calm under pressure, reduced flinch, and you see where I'm going with these things. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting things like bullet damage increases, health increases, and such to be added into the multiplayer portion of the game, but rather perks kind of like that, that adjust your overall play style while complementing your normal three perks that you can have, which is interesting if that's how it works. If that is how it works, though, I think that I'd be on board for that. It seems like it'd be an interesting change that wouldn't really hurt too much of the core gameplay mechanic, but instead adds a little bit to it. Now, let's keep with the good news here and move to the more questionable things a little bit later. The next topic up on deck, the minimap. Simply put, Hope ended up stating classic minimap is indeed present in Modern Warfare 2, no perk necessary, which is a huge win to hear if that's actually the case. And I hate that the past few years minus Cold War have kind of brought me to the point where I'm excited about that and I feel that it is a win by comparison because it is something that is so standard here in Call of Duty history. But after the stubborn nature of Modern Warfare 2019, how we gave all the feedback in the world and it didn't change, I'm happy to see that that seemingly right now is going to be coming back to a classic and traditional minimap here of play. And I personally don't care if it's considered red dot chasing and it removes the tactical realistic gameplay feel. It's a tool that's been used as a part of that core experience. 
for all of Call of Duty. So it just feels weird to not have it. Big win here in my books. Also kind of interesting that he mentioned as a follow-up to this, that that rumored overhaul for Modern Warfare 2019 way back in the day was apparently real, but then got shut down right before it would have gone out. So interesting. I'd love to know a little bit more insight into the backstory of that. But map-wise, Hope also stated what's a little bit consistent with other reports from other insiders. So seems to check out a little further. But he said maps are indeed the more classic three-lane style. Think Cheshire Park, Condor Hideout, Gunrunner, Hackney Yard, and Hovick Sawmill. Now this I'm cool with. A lot of the base maps in the game were great for tactical gameplay, which is one of the reasons I think Search was the best mode in Modern Warfare, but they didn't really complement the flow and pacing of respawn modes all that well, which is where the bulk of players go to. But those maps like Cheshire Park, Condor Hideout, Hackney, Gunrunner, those were all standouts for my memory in 2019 and 2020. Maybe I'm forgetting something glaring or alarming, but if we can avoid the Piccadillys, Peaks, Euphrates Bridges, Ramazas, I'm totally cool with that. So if the map design is like those ones that Hope ends up mentioning, I'd be all right with that. Now, this isn't something that we can really touch on immediately, but I'm very curious to see if any of the classic Modern Warfare 2 maps make it into the game. For those that aren't aware of why I bring that up, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered came out in 2020, but it was campaign only. According to plenty of rumors, that multiplayer was done and finished for a long time, and rumor has it even Modern Warfare 3 Remastered was completed since it was contractually obligated to release as a part of the Sony exclusivity deal, but the MP was scrapped from Modern Warfare 2 Remastered and instead was a loophole released as a campaign only. But that rumor has it that it's going to bolster out the content here for this year in Modern Warfare 2 of 2022, and perhaps the year to follow if it's actually a two-year game. So we'd see more maps from the original Modern Warfare 2 remaster put into play with this upcoming year's game. So very curious to see if we get any at launch or if that's something that'll be held off until post-launch only. I'd be cool with either, honestly. My only hope is that these maps fill out the map offering even more. Like we get a healthy number of maps that are original first and foremost, but then add like four to five maps in on top of that as like a extra dessert scoop of ice cream or something like that with maybe one to two more per season later on post-launch as well, perhaps. So that we get instead of three to four, you get four to five maps per season. Will that happen? Who knows? Next, let's talk about a feature that is incredibly interesting to me and would be the first time that we see it in an Infinity Ward game, that being dolphin diving. Now, that sounds weird, but according to Hope, dolphin diving will be in Modern Warfare 2 alongside sliding. So both will be present, and according to him, this is something that will be incorporated by a design that's actually been long proposed by the community, where holding your slide button will trigger a dolphin dive, but tapping it will trigger the slide. So this honestly is a pretty straightforward and relatively user-friendly mechanic in terms of offering multiple ways to move around the map, but without sacrificing any controller or keyboard space, and it mixes some of the best of both, I think. I know that people would love dolphin diving in the past, and I'm sure that others have loved the sliding mechanic. So I'm here for both of these being introduced. Now, on top of this, some other additional stuff that he mentioned was that Rose was returning as an operator. That makes sense. That'd be part of Shadow Company. And we talked about how Ralph mentioned them coming back as well. Again, storyline and narrative wise, that fits too. Off the books, kind of PMC, under the table dealings that might not necessarily be the most suited for government sanctioned spec ops teams. So Rose is seemingly returning here as well. That one, a little bit more inconsequential, but an interesting detail that he mentioned as well. But the other things that he mentioned are now just kind of weird, and I'm curious to see if we actually get them in the capacity they're mentioned. Firstly, no sprint out fire times are apparently going to be in Modern Warfare 2. Apparently, a new mechanic is going to let you sprint while also firing while ADS. So it's not like it's sprinting and hip firing, but instead adding a little bit more per se accuracy to that, though I can't imagine that we'd have it as accurate as just standing still and aiming down sight, or if we really want to get into the realism aspect of it, Modern Warfare 2019 for the first like two weeks or so, if you went crouched or prone, it actually mitigated recoil even more. So so I'm assuming we were not going to see it that accurate, but it seems like that could be something coming as well. And the final thing mentioned here is that he said that Last Stand was currently in the build of Modern Warfare 2 right now. But this is something that I don't know if I'd expect to make it past the cutting room floor, simply because this was in Modern Warfare 2019 as well, but it never made it to the full finished build. So it's possible, but hopefully that doesn't come back because obviously that was one of the big things that we did not like about modern warfare in the past with the original trilogy so fingers crossed that doesn't return but 
that's some multiplayer information here from Hope and Insider here that we've talked about on the channel, and it is pretty interesting. There are a couple of things that I think absolutely could make for some gameplay shakeups, but in a potential good way, but also maybe if some of this stuff sticks, maybe not in a so great way either. But we'll have to wait and see how everything shakes up. Again, we're getting closer and closer to what I would imagine is the official teasers and reveals. I don't see us waiting until end of summer this time around with a Warzone reveal happening here for this. Maybe if they do like a multiplayer reveal, they could do something in Warzone but I think that they're going to try and take as much advantage of the free real estate here in terms of the calendar and how much time they can hype up Modern Warfare 2, especially given the shortcomings that Vanguard has offered in terms of that premium offering. So I think we'll start to see stuff here in the next month and a half or so, perhaps. But for right now, we just have that speculation, that inside insight. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys like the sound of this kind of stuff? Maybe not so much. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2 and anything COD related here in the future. If you guys are at all interested, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.